Now is the placing of the back cover of the, the native. So make sure that you position it well. Make sure that your hand is straight, especially around the shoulder line, to get it right. So, uh, and make sure that you place your hand on it like this to get the balancing of the back. Or instead, you pin it down before you match this part of it. So after iron it like this, and then after then you go to the table and give it a very good ironing, and then set the shoulder line like this. So this is how you set the shoulder and the neckline. So. This atomizer fashion design. So then you now take your neckline measurement, and if there's any excess, you reduce it. If the neck is more, then you now make the adjustment like this. So once you have already trimmed the neck, then you now what? Also assess the back if the back is not okay then you make the then you now take this measurement from the neck to the desired opening which is like seven inches so you can see avoid notch the shoulder and reduce the what the ss so once you are through then you take it to the machine then you start with the inner with the inner flap Once you are done with the inner, you can see how I'm matching it for a good finishing. Just take your time while matching this. Then the next thing is the pipe. At this point, you need to be very, very careful while fixing the pipe. But the easiest way that I always fix the pipe is to open it this way. Then you stitch on the neckline so as to guide you on the neck because the pipe always like I think mean, the pipe always try to work to be longer than the pipe now. So once the neck it's the pipe, you have to be very careful and your hand should be straight on it to avoid rough work. So once you know how to match it very well, you see the neat neck the neatness of the neckline comes out very well. As you can see, you have to also make sure that the machine speed you reduce the machine speed to enable you controlling the what the pipe and make sure that you insert the pipe very well so also allow pulling out so so as you can see I'm moving slowly on it so that to enable me controlling it very well so now I'm matching the top, which is the tip of the neck, which is the upper part of it. So you have to be very, very careful while matching it. 
it's just an optional you can leave it just one single matching so in order for you to also make it more look neat so you can match it the both sides you can match it more than one or two or three like that but if you know that your hand is not straight just match it once so once you are true in this aspect you take it to your table and give it a very good pressing from the inside and also make sure that your the temperature of your iron should be at the very lower level to for not allowing it to stain or not making it to shine so once you are through like this you still iron it from the front either you place another material on it to avoid stain from the iron or if your iron is okay then you can iron direct but be sure that for every ironing of any fabric especially all those main fabric once it's begin your iron is shining the the fabric is a sign of wrong work so take your time while using the iron so you can set your iron based on your material there is some iron that come with silky and then and under the control you see silky uh cutting and the rest of it so set the iron based on your fabric so you can see the outcome of the neckline so the next thing now is to fix the the flap itself so now while fixing the flap you have to be very very careful in this aspect this is the flap So this from the inside so while you turn it from outside you have to be very very careful in this aspect while matching it if you are matching it now make sure that your hand is very straight in it but this is where the neatness and the outcome of men sewing come ability to match it very well as in a straight way without having a zigzag shape while matching it so you can see that you have, you have to be very very careful while sewing it your machine should be at a very very low speed so as you can see the straightness of the stitches and then make sure that you be cutting the thread along to avoid what rough work it's not good while so include you leave thread for the customer to detect where is the thread in your the thread in your work so the thread should be your enemy once you are seeing any thread on your so in trial your possible best to cut it out for a very good finishing So once you reach that starting point, then you take it to the center and make sure that you tack it very well. You can see how I'm moving the thread. That is how your wash should look like. Still, you take it to your table and iron it. So communicate with your iron is one of the good things that will make your finishing comes come out and comes out excel. So after finishing the ironing, then you have to position the pocket. So the pocket position, as you can see, I do not even measure it. I always use my eye gauge in doing that. That is one and a half inches above uh, above the armhole. So that is where I position my pocket. One inches to one and a half inches from the lattice. If your armhole is nine or nine inches now, you come up by and then come up, it will give you eight point eight inches or eight 
point five. If you're using one and a half, it should be eight. Uh, eight point five. Then seven point five. Sorry. While if you are using one inch, it should be what eight. If you're using nine inches armhole, as you can see, the one and a half inches above my armhole. Or better still, you take the measurement from the shoulder line directly to the pocket line. These are nine inches or eight inches. As you can see, avoid the position of the pocket. The reason why I'm using this wood now is because I'm seeing some kind of pause on the cloth there due to the extra gum that I use from under. So once I'm done in matching the pocket now. I'll still go to the table and iron it from inside to eliminate this small pores that is on it from the ester gum or I don't know how you call it or clothes gum that I insert on it to just enable the chest line to be firm. So once I'm through with the pocket now, as you can see, I never have I've not yet with the you can see I'm still cutting it so I've not yet with the clothes. So the reason why I don't weave the arm as in the body of the, the borders of the clothes first is because I want the armhole. You can see that I'm fixing the hand on it now. I weave the hand alongside with the armhole before weaving the main as in the bodies. So, so after joining the shoulder now take it to the weaving. I weave the shoulder the, the shoulder first. Sorry, the armhole first before weaving the body. Once I'm done with this. This is the second parallel and then make sure that you notch the shoulder so that the hand will correspond with the body. <laughs> so once you are true. The next thing you take it to the weaving machine and move it. So this is the armhole now. I'm moving the armhole first. So as I'm moving it together. Started from the armhole, don't mind my, my weaving machine. So, after I weave it, uh, I'm joining the hands together by using the hand round. Then, at this juncture, I've already taken my body measurement, which is a chest line measurement. Then, I take the measurement along with it. So, once you are through with the the body so now is the slit side so once I'm through now I'll just open it from and then open the side side make sure that you stitch this down part very well because it's very 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 important to avoid the embarrassment and some time and then turn from that